Good evening. Thank you for coming out tonight for our the first of our midweek Lenten services. Um, tonight we are looking at, we're beginning our series on the Sassy Saints, and we'll be talking about Perpetua and Felicity. Um, their story is rather gruesome, um, just let you know right now, as it is for most of the martyrs. I mean, they did not die well. That's why they're martyrs. But uh, theirs is particularly gruesome. Um, so just fair warning. Tonight we're we're operating at about PG-13 on on what, what I'm going to tell you. Um, we are not going to use slides tonight per se because you have it in front of you. But um, I did prepare one slide for the sermon uh, with an icon of the of the saints that we're talking about. So at least you know who we're talking about. And uh, certainly for, for, for Perpetua and Felicity, they lived in the third century. So we don't have a photo of them per se, obviously, um, but we do have icons. So um, I'm going to show you one of those and then explain what's going on. So thank you again for coming and let us begin our worship. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light of darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost on. Let your light scatter the darkness. Light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. You who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. shadows come and light our hearts anew in the stars that grace the darkness in the blazing sun of dawn in the light of peace and wisdom we can hear your quiet song with wonder, love that warms our weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, Make us shine with gentle justice. Let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ to light our way. Loving Spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word 
loved and your presence are the light of our pathways and you are the light and life of all creation Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of our hands as an offering to you. O oh God, I call to you. before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The reading for tonight is from Ephesians 6, chapter, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, Take the shield of faith which you will be, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so as I was saying to you as we were getting started, Perpetua and Felicity, there they are, they were members of the early church back in Carthage, which is in North Africa, and they were martyred on March 7th, 2000, or excuse me, 20, I can't even say it, 203. Now, when you look at an icon, there's something that, sh that should stand out to you. One is the halo, okay, around their head. That means that they are saint. They have been canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. The other thing to notice is the color of their clothing. If someone is um, wearing white, they, they died um, as a saint. They died uh, because they were a holy person. They died uh, virtuously. If they're wearing red, they were a martyr. So the red is for blood. Okay? It's kind of hard to tell in the picture, but they're both wearing red. Um, Perpetua is wearing a darker red, and Felicity is wearing a lighter red. Why? I don't know. But they're both wearing red. Notice the character in the back. That's, that's a bull. Um, it's actually a heifer. And you'll find out why in, in a little bit. And the building they're standing in front of is an arena. So they were in an arena when they were martyred by this cow. <clears throat> um, but I'll get there. I'll get there and explain what happened. So their story is significant for a number of reasons. Um, their strong faith, of course, because they were faithful to Christ until the very, very end. But they're also particularly important because Perpetua kept a diary while she was in prison. And somehow this was smuggled out right before she died. And so we have it, or pieces of it anyway. We have, we have pieces of what life was like for her in, in the last couple months, probably, um, before she died. And that makes hers among the oldest of the Christian writings that we have by a female writer. So this is, she is very, very important. So in the year 200 or so, it was still illegal to be a Christian. We know that. Christianity was not legalized by the Roman Empire until 314, when Constantine had his conversion experience. So she predates that by a good 112 years or so, 115. Uh, Perpetua was a woman of noble birth. You can see that in the picture. She's got kind of pearls around her head. Um, on, on the front of her head, not the halo, but on her crown, the crown of her head, she's wearing pearls. So that would indicate that she was, she was a wealthy woman. Um, she was born into a wealthy family, and she married a wealthy man. Um, at the time of her arrest, she had just given birth to her firstborn son. And it was around that time, it was Emperor Severus's birthday, and he was in the mood for some sport. Namely, to watch the Christians being torn apart in an arena by wild animals. So he sent his thugs out to track Perpetua because he thought that she would attract a big crowd because she was a noble person. And so they, they followed her around, kind of like the CIA, waited for her to, to be caught in the act of worship, and they arrested her and four of her friends. Her father begged her to renounce her faith. And she said to him, Father, do you see this vessel lying here? And she pointed to this pitcher. And he replied, I see it. And, he, and she said, Can it be called by any other name than that which it is? And he said, No. And she said, So, can I, I, so I cannot call myself anything other than what I am, which is a Christian. And her father became so angry at her, he wanted to gouge out her eyes. Now, why fathers love to do this to their daughters, I don't know. Um, but there, we have several stories of martyrs whose eyes were gouged out by their fathers. I don't get that, but that's what he was going to do. 
But instead, he left her alone and chose instead to ignore her for several days. And she was grateful for that. In the meantime, she and her friends finished their instruction in the church. They were baptized. <clears throat> and it was not long after that that they were arrested and thrown in prison. And when she and Felicity and the three others were thrown in there, they suffered terribly. Um, it was very hot. It was very crowded. They were not well cared for. The guards were not nice to them. They were cruel. Plus, as I said, she had just given birth. And so she had no way to express her breast milk. So she was suffer suffering physically as well as emotionally because she could not take care of her newborn son. So while she's in prison, she wrote about um, several dreams or visions that she had while she was there. And the first one that's recorded is about this bronze ladder that reached up into heaven. And it was very narrow and it could only fit one person at a time. And there were swords and spears and hooks and knives that were fastened to the outside part of the ladder. So you had to be really careful when you were climbing it. And if you slipped, you'd be cut to pieces. And Perpetua approached the ladder, and underneath the first rung, a dragon poked its head out, which she thought was the devil. And she stepped on his head as the first step, and then climbed the ladder up, up into heaven. And at the top, she saw this very large and beautiful garden with a man seated right in the middle of it. And he was very tall. He was dressed like a shepherd, and he had hair like white wool. And standing around him were thousands and thousands of the saints. And he raised his head up, and he looked at her, and he said, Welcome, child. And he gave her curds like cottage cheese, right? And she took them in her hand. She cupped them in her hands like this, and she held them up, and then she ate them. And everyone there said, Amen. And when they said, Amen, she woke up, and she woke up with a sweet taste in her mouth. And she took from that dream that she would overcome the devil, she would overcome her suffering, but that her death would be through suffering, just like the Lord's and it was coming soon. Later, she dream also dreamed of her brother, who happened to predecease her. And she saw him suffering in purgatory, which, you know, we don't really buy into, but this is a Catholic saint, so she sees him in purgatory. And then she saw him later on in the dream in paradise with the Lord. And she felt that he was telling her that her time was coming soon and that she would be joining him where he was. Her father came to her after these dreams. He came to her again and again, begging her to renounce her faith, which, of course, she refused to do. He even used her son to make her feel guilty and said things like, do you really want your son to grow up without a mother? Is your faith really worth this much to you? And because, and he kept, he kept after her, shaming her because of her stubbornness about her faith, and yet she refused to deny it. <clears throat> and that brings us to Felicity. We know more about Perpetua because Perpetua kept the diary, but she also wrote about her friend Felicity. And Felicity was among the group that were arrested, as I told you. She was not a noblewoman. She was a slave person. And maybe she was Perpetua's slave. We don't know. But she was definitely a servant. And she was eight months pregnant when they were arrested. And um, it was illegal to throw a pregnant woman to the lions. The Romans thought that was just too far. They could throw people to the lions, but if she was pregnant, that they drew a line there. So she was praying that the child would come early so that she could die with her friends. And by now, the prison guard who had been listening to them sing and pray together, he had also become a Christian. He came to believe because of them. And so out of Christian charity, he did what he could for them 
which was to move them to a better part of the prison so it wasn't as crowded and hot. And, um, and so they prayed, they, they prayed together, and they prayed that the baby would come early, and Felicity went into labor right after that prayer was finished, and she had the baby three days prior to their execution. To humiliate the women, the guards came in and threatened to strip them of their clothing and force them to wear the dresses of the priestesses of Ceres, which was a Roman god. And Perpetua refused. She just flat out, here's the sass, she just flat out refused. You cannot make us do this, she said, because what are you going to do? We're already going to die for our faith. You, we are not doing this. And they were surprised by that, the guards. They were surprised by her sass and her gumption. And so they, uh, because they refused to wear those garments at the time of their martyrdom, the guards then threatened to strip them and force them to go into the area, arena naked. And Perpetua said, go ahead, take our clothing. You cannot touch us because we are clothed with the light of Christ. Right? And so the soldiers stripped them of their clothing and they made them wear fishnets instead. So out they go into the arena, clad in, in these fishnets, and the crowds were just horrified because they could see how young they were. I didn't tell you how young they were. Perpetual was 22 and Felicity was around 18. Very, very young. And the crowds booed and complained at seeing, seeing these girls and their bodies. They could tell that they were new mothers. Um, milk was leaking from Perpetua because she'd not been able to breastfeed her son. And Felicity was still bleeding because she had just given birth. And so the crowd said that was gross. That's my word, but that's what they said. They said that was too much, and so they put robes around them so the crowds did not have to see their bodies. And they went out there into the ring, and they stood there together holding on to each other, and just then a rabid cow was let loose into the ring, and it gored Perpetua, and it tossed her into the air. And she landed really hard on the ground, and when she regained consciousness, she covered the, she, she was gored in the leg. And so she covered herself with her robe. And, and then she noticed that her hair had become disheveled. And so she fixed her hair. And this was not vanity, but it was showing the crowd her joy at, at going through this suffering because she knew where she was going to be with the Lord. And everyone was amazed at this. And so they, they corralled the cow at this point, and a young soldier came forward and stabbed Felicity in the throat, and she died. But Perpetua, he stabbed in the ribs, and she did not die. So she stood up, and she said to him, this is where you need to do it. And she took the, the edge of the, or the blade of the sword and pointed it to her throat and he stabbed her in the throat, and she died. Now, this is really a gruesome story. This is probably the most gruesome we're going to get for Lent. But there's a lot we can learn from these two women. The first of which is that faith is to be first and foremost in our lives. Faith should be above family. Faith is to be above friends. Faith is to be number one, even under the threat of death. And thankfully, we live in a country where we can worship who we want to and how we want to. And so perhaps that threat of arrest for our faith might be a little lost on us. But not everyone has that freedom. Not everyone in the world has that same liberty that we do. There are still plenty of places in the world where Christians are have to worship underground, such as in China, the Middle East, or India, just to name a few. 
but maybe we can better understand the division of family over faith. We can understand how families are divided over such things, perhaps faith, certainly politics, at least my, that's true for my family. And there's issues such as these and maybe others that are causing division in families today. What's interesting to note, though, is that per Perpetua was not heartless toward her father. She wrote repeatedly in her diary that she grieved for him because he refused to have faith in Christ. It was easy to, to imagine that Perpetua spent many of her final hours in prayer for her father. And it would have been really easy for her to resent him, both for not protecting her and also for tormenting her because she was a believer. But Perpetua was transformed by her love for Christ. It's hard, it's hard to imagine a situation that would be worse than what she lived in. A third century prison was not clean, of course, um, probably co-ed, um, and, and the guards were not, were not nice to the prisoners. They did not treat them well. And Perpetua, Perpetua was both physically and emotionally tormented by being separated from her son. But thankfully, after they moved into that newer area, the prison guard there had pity on her and allowed her mother to come visit. And her mother brought her son. And Perpetua wrote, I became well and enlightened of my labor and care for the child. And suddenly the prison was made a palace for me and I would sooner be there than anywhere else. Can you imagine? What a transformation, all through love. It changed everything. I pray none of us would ever know a situation like that, but attitude is everything. We have the power to transform situations where we feel trapped or discontented, rejected or alone, simply by changing our attitude and focusing on who we love and how we love them. How we present ourselves to the world also matters. The world is watching us. The world is becoming less and less Christian day by day, and they are watching us. And it would have been easy for Perpetua and Felicity to have had a bad attitude because they suffered. They suffered a lot. It would have been easy for them to complain about their situation. I most certainly would have but they didn't. Instead, they chose to find joy in their sufferings. They did not compromise when the guards tried to mock them with those pagan costumes. And as I mentioned before, not even when they faced that rabid cow, Perpetua made sure that she was modest. She made sure she was covered up and that she even pinned up her hair, which as I said, was not about being vain, but it was about showing those gathered there how she felt about her martyrdom. She welcomed the opportunity to die with Christ, with gra for Christ, with gratitude and even joy. And because she suffered gracefully, she shared that message with everyone there who witnessed her death. And we're still talking about her today. Finally, we can learn from Perpetua and Felicity the importance of community and of deep and holy friendship. They were there for each other when they were learning about Jesus. They were there for each other when they were arrested. They were there for each other in motherhood. They were there for each other when they died in the faith together. And when we live in community, we draw hope and strength from each other, especially when life seems hopeless and hard. When we gather in community, we can pray with and for each other, and we remember Christ's promise to be with us wherever two or three are gathered in his name. And while this story is gruesome, Perpetua and Felicity's story is one of incredible faith. It's a steadfast faith, not just in adversity, but even in the face of death. I pray we never need this kind of faith. 
But if so, may God grant us such love for Christ that even we can remain faithful to the end. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. Who live out 
out your gospel. God of mercy, hold us in the For all those who governed that justice might guide them. God of mercy, hold us in the For all those who labor in service to others. God of mercy, hold us in the Grant whether that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. God of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, Lord, us gracious God. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness in life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, your Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.